Uh, well, can I say something before you start? Yes, I think. Well, hello. You, you yes. Sound hello. Good. Yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Guided English Group Journey. This group journey is for who you want to recall who you are. Okay. And thank you very much for joining us. We will always have this group journey once a month to benefit all of you who have forgotten who you are and how you get here on earth without no memory. And also, we will open this guided group, uh, guided English group journey for everyone in the world if you are interested to recall who you are. But first, I would highly recommend for all of you to read this book, okay? The Sarah's Agenda to Understand Why You Are Here on Earth with No Memory with the author Scott Limbrio, who is here with us to guide us to remember more about ourselves. Would you like to add something to this group journey, Scott? Yeah, okay. This book and the other three that I've published took an entire lifetime to put, develop with friends from out of town, refine them, publish them. This was published five times to get it to the point that these master teachers I work with wanted it, which has a special technique section in the back. So if you read English, you're gonna have fun with that because it has everything to do with helping you remember all you were made to forget. That means all of you have had more lifetimes in other worlds, much more evolved than you are here now. Part of this work is to help you understand how it is you came to be on this planet with everyone else with no memory or very little. This is what this work is about, why it's on earth now to change this. So there is a special technique section at the back of this book. These images that you see here are images of the way a Galactic Alliance Emerald Star Cruiser looks. That's a mile long, stationed in the ice rings of the planet Saturn. These are 30 foot in diameter scout class ships. It's original art that depicts what they really are. It's really stationed in the, the rings around Saturn are made of frozen chunks of ice. Scientists on Earth know this now. So it's got a, 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 what's called an anti-gravitic field around it. It's hovering there safely. It doesn't run into the ice. It's policing or protecting our solar system from any negative alien races from coming here. What people on Earth don't know yet, 25 years ago, reptilians and greys and abductions and all that stuff everybody was talking about stopped way back then. And they're way in the past still about what's really taking place now out in the universe. This book is more about what's taking place amongst extraterrestrial races that never occurred before for them, that is giving them a focus on Earth to help change things here for the first time. You have to go through the experience yourself to know it for yourself. So this work is about providing you with a way to remember how to see into the multiverse, how to visualize another planet, how to visualize the higher realities, how to bring back something you knew how to do very well a long time ago. And this has to do with secondary and primary implants and what they are, because they are not in the physical body. They cannot be removed on Earth. There's nobody on Earth that can do that because people on Earth have a subconscious mind and it's not possible to do it in a negative atmosphere because the planet's atmosphere around Earth still has everything negative recorded in it that was ever done by humans to other humans, to animals, to plants, to the environment, going back 65 million years when the big dinosaurs were deliberately made extinct here. And the races on Earth you, we see here never evolved originally. Humans didn't evolve on this planet at all originally. They come from other planetary systems, usually with binary or trinary sun systems, which have genetic body forms of human much more evolved than what we have on Earth with two strands. So this is a lot of what people were made to forget. More importantly, they were made to forget their lives that existed beyond what certain esoteric groups call the void. There are many levels above the void. There are several Buddhist monks that we, we've worked with that I've guided because they need to know there's something beyond that. And they're disciplined and ready to do it. So they join us on some of these groups 
in order to find out what they can't get in teachings on earth, at least not yet. That's changing. So the book may look science fiction, and it's written so it's an, an adventure visual story because you, it's written so you can imagine being in the experience when you're reading it. These journeys take people further than what's in a book. This is just the beginning. These books are, consider them to be channels of the hue, the first sound behind all creation. First half of the word hue or human, hidden in plain sight, opens a doorway through the pineal gland, the center of the brain. And it connects to the atma you are, which is that thing. It's behind my head. It's the first time, as far as I know, that anybody has ever brought to this planet what we look like that is not now and has never been a physical body. It isn't one of these. That is what is made in the image of source or prime creator, not this. These are lower genetic forms that we run. So when we go on these journeys, We go on these journeys in order to begin to recover all that we were made to forget a long time ago. The primary implant we, we explore at times is about what was done to you that did result in your death and torture, that put you on earth with no memory. So it takes some preparation and freedom from secondary implants before you can co-creatively work with friends from other worlds to have that removed, to see what's in it. Because it's negative effect through the subconscious mind of people on earth misdirects their entire lives. And they end up being reincarnated over and over again because when they die, they die in fear. Fear is negative, it creates a negative situation. So we wanna be free of fear there's only one thing any being has to ever learn how to give up, and that's to drop fear permanently. That's programs in the subconscious. At some point, you drop having a subconscious mind altogether. That's how many races on other worlds live. You would consider them angelic if you met them. Their energy is so high, but they're just normal. To them, they're just normal. So as you can see, Earth has a, a lot of changing to go through to be accepted into a larger alliance of world systems. The beings that live out there on most planets do not live like people on Earth. Not at all. Not even close. They don't have governments that lie to people. They don't have tax systems. They don't require you pay for something to be born on a planet. This is created by misguided people, politically and religiously and it traps them in the same system. This planet has 60 or more governments that don't even get along. How can an extraterrestrial conglomeration alliance of worlds work with all those different governments and be universally good for everyone? How can they do it? How can they bridge the gap to bring technology and things here that they would share with us freely with no cost or expense? Because they don't use money. That was illegal, banned a long time ago. So how do they do that and get themselves here and help us change without rioting in the streets, without destruction, without pulling down governments, without ruining economies because of people's fear? This is the kind of thing that will require millions, even billions of beings from other worlds to fix this broken planet because it is not normal at all. It never has been yet. One of the first things that had to happen here was the, the stopping of the polar shifts that happened to this planet every 100,000 years. They destroy all life on the planet. Unless you can get off in a ship, you're toast. And then it's recolonized. Uh, so if you go back 65 million years, where the heck is that missing history for all of you? And what about your galactic alliance history out in the galaxy and other galaxies? Because you all came from the stars None of you are native to this planet. None of you originated here. 
The human forms represented here by different races did not originate in one atmosphere and one gravitational field in one solar system with one sun. That is not possible. Everyone of a different race that's human here came from other planetary systems that have whole worlds that have that particular race represented there as a human form. So this is all missing from people. And the reason they don't recall it is because there is there are programs that are terrorizing fear, subconscious, that influence the nervous system on Earth to make the wrong decisions about what they have to do to wake up, to remember. It's like, hey, here's an artificial secondary implant idea. If they put it in you in a great life you had, in a great memory, in the electromagnetic field that surrounds the atma, never in it, implants cannot be put in the atma. It's not made of energy, matter, space, and time. It's made of an energy that comes from a source far above the void. The black area of space out in outer space that human eyes on Earth see as black in a Hubble Space Telescope image isn't black at all. To an atma hovering in its true form in space, it's a white golden light everywhere. It's non-nuclear, it's non-atomic, it's not molecules, it's not DNA, it's not atoms, but it supports all. We are made out of that energy. So in a sense, collectively, we support the whole multidimensional creation. And if the old failed experiment of good and evil were to prevail, then we would never be able to change anything. That is changing in the universe and in the higher worlds in the last nine Earth years or so. And it's moving in a new direction. It's moving through our solar system. It's moving from the collaboration and co-creative inspiration of many, many beings who have a vested interest now that Earth not go up in nuclear war because this 8 billion people on Earth do not have the right now, nor have they ever had the right to blow themselves up and harm life in parallel dimensions through interdimensional doorways that exist in quite a profuse number on this planet people don't know about. We don't have the right to do that and harm life out in the universe. We don't have free will to abuse this way. So when people on Earth have tried to have nuclear war here, it was stopped. Not from people on Earth, not by militaries, not from governments. It was stopped from space. Launch computers were simply shut down. That's the only interference they've had on this planet. The only other thing they did so far was removed negative beings from other worlds had it gotten uh, situated in bases in the classified community. The classified people did not know how to get rid of them. They're too advanced technologically. So they had to be removed by friends from out of town who could do this safely, get them out of our solar system, and then start things in a new direction. One of the first things that was done by beings who are called silent mentors, they are the mechanics of creation. They know how to stop the flipping of planet, planet's poles like Earth did over and over again for such a very long time. So which means that life on Earth could evolve to 100,000 years and then it's all wiped out, which isn't fair because other planets do not have this problem. So that had to be fixed first. That's done. Be no more golden age to iron age for this planet. If you've ever heard of such terms, it means Golden Age, is air, all this energy on Earth is very much of the hue and the oceans are charged. They're luminous because a normal planet has a charged water. H2O can hold the charge of the hue in large amounts. It makes it glow. The sap in trees and the water and plants on normal planets glow. Earth is depleted. So this has to be fixed, but it's not going to be fixed by people on Earth. I can certainly tell you that. That means... For Earth to move forward and become a space-faring race, we have to change because there is no future. Before we go on this journey, there is no future in space travel whatsoever. The way three countries that are most powerful on Earth right now are thinking about it, they're going to go out and divide up the spoils of other people's planners and fight to see who's dominant. I can tell you that will never take place because space that they think they're going to fight over is already occupied by far more advanced races than we are. They won't allow it. 
So our solar system is now quarantined. It means not only can bad guys not get into it anymore because they've been removed, but the most dangerous race now out there is not reptilians or greys or any of that anymore. It's people on Earth. They're the most dangerous. They're the most divided. They're most subconsciously influenced with fear to make decisions. People on Earth, when they make decisions from governments based on fear, always and in every case, make the wrong decision. Fear is negative. It creates a repercussion in space-time that comes back as negative. It's a teacher. This means that people in other worlds also do not put out negative imagination. They grew up from birth knowing better, and they don't have subconscious negative influences. So we need to benefit from our fellow brothers and sisters that are out among the stars. If we don't, this world will be toast, and life will end here again. This means this has happened many times in 65 million years. We don't want that again. So we go on the journey with the understanding that we are an Atma. It just means that we are a spherical being made of an energy that's not physical. We never have been physical bodies, not one of us. We run them like masters, but in an unconscious way. And as long as we're running them unconscious of even how we got here, then we cannot progress. We cannot actually get free of this madness. When I started this recording, it became a telepathic journey. This means it's not psychic. I'm not putting down psychics or saying anything negative about anybody. It's just that. They work with the positive and negative opposing energies in the lower planes of time and space. And that's unreliable because subconscious influences misdirect them. So we work with the one energy that supports all the positive and negative lower dimensions of time and space. There are f actually five planes before you get to the void. There's the physical universe you're very familiar with. There are 144 parallel dimensions in the physical universe and 144 in the astral. Next plane up, next heaven, where all emotion comes from. 144 in the causal, next one up. 144 in the mental. 144 in the etheric. And then there's the void. And then there's getting up to Satnam's realm, which has to do with, it means true name, first personification of any form you might see that's like human. And, he, and that is called the Atma plane. It's the place we left from a long time ago to start running bodies in the lower worlds of time and space until the failed experiment of good and evil trapped us. That's exactly how this happened. Which means to change this down here, more people have to recover who they are so they can fulfill the purpose for their existing. Well, the greatest question people have asked throughout eternity is, why do I exist? There is only one correct answer. It isn't what people think. It is, in fact, to be a conscious, trustworthy co-creator with the source behind all life itself. That's a very lofty, high responsibility that has an equal amount of freedom that goes along with it. We have to help change the lower worlds from the stuck place of good and evil into something that will neutralize those opposing forces and join them into a harmony like the yin and yang symbol. So our imagination goes through the positive and negative whole and combined with a golden white light of the hue running through it. Then we manifest things without having repercussions in space and time. No more karma, no more reincarnation. We start running bodies fully aware of what we are as a spherical being. And we know we're not them, we can get in and out of them. That's normal. Earth is far from that. But it's destined to become that, but not because of what people on Earth do now. There's not enough people awake per scratch on this planet to change it in time before people would annihilate themselves here. This is not guesswork. They know with absolute certainty 
where this world will go if it's left to its own devices as it is now. So something has to intervene at least to the degree to get enough people awake to bring about a transformation in this world that has never happened before. But it's not just in, in motion now and underway for the people of Earth. It's just one little planet among billions in just our galaxy alone. It's for the benefit of all the life out there as well. We are supposed to respect all life. That is love. Divine love is respecting all life. How can you respect a greater God, a greater supreme being, or a greater source or prime creator if you don't know the life that's in it? If you're made to forget, or you're afraid to remember, afraid to get out of your body until death takes your body away and you're forced to do it. That's not normal. That's not the way it's supposed to be. So we want to wake this up while we're alive, running the body here. Then the channel of the hue, what we call the hue expansion ray, which is a new energy of consciousness moving through this omnipresent living power. It's moving in one direction only now. It doesn't move in opposites. It is the energy that is behind and supporting opposites, but it's changing them. And it does that through us. Every night, every one of us puts our body in the trance state we call sleep, at least extraterrestrial human and other races call it that, because they get out of their bodies consciously when they put the bodies to sleep, to rejuvenate them. But where they go, they bring back the awareness of where they're going in the morning. People on earth don't do this. There's a subconscious terror that prevents them from doing it. They don't even know they have. So this is a process of beginning to wake all that up. The first half of the word human, hidden in plain sight, is a frequency that when sent out vocally or silently inside, opens a doorway through the pineal gland in the center of the brain. The human brain and its function and its purpose does not imagine anything. This is a shock for people to hear this for the first time on this lifetime on this planet. I mean, they once knew it. The brain doesn't imagine. It has no motion picture camera in it that can project images on a movie screen. The, the actual imaginer of things through the brain is the atma hovering above the body, the real us. That can see into the universe. It's made of the same energy as the omnipresent living power out in space that little galaxies float in. They create electromagnetic fields around a spinning nucleus, just like a planet does, or a moon or a sun, and they are able to float in this other supportive energy. The more advanced races out there that we're going to meet on this journey, they know how to work with that they know how to respect that one power that's not nuclear or atomic. They know in the CERN super collider in Switzerland, when they, in these huge electromagnetic fields, they send particles around and crash them into each other near the speed of light. They can detect energy behind matter. They don't know what it is or how to work with it, but quantum physicists kind of have an understanding of it. It's a living power. They don't know how to work with it. So they coined a term, they call it the God particle. Scientists on Earth today and astrophysicists and astronomers understand that most of the suns in our galaxy, in the Milky Way, are binary or trinary sun systems. It means there are two suns, a big one and a smaller one circling it, and then planets orbit those. A trinary system has three of those suns at different distances, and the planets orbit them. They know this today on Earth, that they don't understand it. If you're in a trinary sun system, the human form you would have would have four-stranded DNA. And because of the effect of those three suns, they don't have polar ice caps. Life can develop there for hundreds of millions of years, much higher form than a single sun can provide for one solar system like the one we live in. Our nearest star is a binary sun system to our sun. That's already two. People on Earth don't understand the significance of this yet, but they will. 
The science that Earth has now had since World War II ended did not come originally from any inventors or scientists on this planet. It was imported here, at first through Nazi scientists in a negative way. That was to try to get us to blow, to blow ourselves up and then they take over. It didn't work, it failed, they failed, and they were defeated. That had nothing to do with people's awareness of good and bad races on Earth. It was from outside this planet that that whole thing happened. And then both countries in the Russia and the United States brought these scientists who were connected to these little gray guys into both countries. And then they had beings in these countries and pardoned them and put them ahead of space programs and they trapped the people in these countries. Secret organizations had implants put in them. They didn't know how to stop it or get rid of it. So they used little chip technology and experimented on some people on Earth and put it under their skin. I can tell you that was a failed experiment. It didn't work because implants aren't under the skin. They're not in bodies. They were out of their league. They were out-thought and out-thunk and out-tricked and maneuvered. Countries accepted limited exchange of technology from other worlds that were tyrants who didn't care if we blew ourselves up. This was a problem. Fear makes people make such terrible decisions. I don't blame governments on Earth. My work does not target anything negative. It doesn't go after the head of religions who really don't know either what's been done to them. It's for the benefit of all life. This journey is for the benefit of classified people too. They had stuff done to them worse than you. I can't blame them for making all these wrong decisions they're making here. They need to get some help and they're gonna get that help. They're going to have to receive that help from off outside of this planet because those beings know exactly the technology and understanding of how to fix this place. People on Earth haven't got a clue how to fix this place. Not in time. It's important that telepathically, which is a pure form of communication between atmas, it moves through the omnipresent cube, which is non-nuclear, non-atomic, there's no negative and positive nature, and it's the pure positive energy that supports everything. It's the same thing we are comprised of as individuals. So it's moving through us, imparting this awareness. It's permanent. When this becomes aware in you, it's permanent. It cannot be reversed. It's one way, onward and upward. It's important that you close your eyes if you're going to visualize this stuff, and here's why. When your eyes are shut, it shuts off that part of the brain that sees and receives information from a negative atmosphere. And Earth's atmosphere is just packed full of negative stuff. So we shut that off. And when that happens, there's a doorway that opens through the pineal gland to the core of the white core of the being you are as an atma. It be, starts to wake things up so the atma can run a body in a more conscious manner. Already, it's a very complex process for an atom to run a physical body. But it's the same thing as a car. If you look at your car and it sits there and you want it to go to the store, it will not go anywhere until you get in it, turn the key, and drive it there. First comes the imagination. This is the atma you are seeing you at the store, that the body follows and you get there. This is the same thing except when you imagine being out in space, when I guide you to do this with help from friends from off world, then you get to see what it's like to be hovering as an atma out in space. That's right, out in the black void, except it isn't black, not to you. When you're out there, it's a white golden light everywhere because the atma can see it, can hear it. The limited eyes and ears of a human body on earth cannot see into a high enough frequency to perceive it, so it looks black, even in photographs. So when they determined what the speed of light was, 286,000 miles and some change per second, they did this from using physical eyes, physical bodies to determine it, and trapped themselves in a limit of understanding about light and its speed that has no such limits. It does not take billions of years for light to reach this planet from other galaxies or star systems. 
That's just the perception of humans as they are misdirected by subconscious sphere on Earth. There are no limits. So they make up this stuff, infrared, ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma rays. It's just all the same thing. Different frequency levels created in the multiverse made of the same, backed by the same power. One living energy. So when beings from other worlds can get across the stars in thousands of times faster than a so-called limit of the speed of light, they do it because they work with an energy that is not physical matter. It is not time and space. It does not obey the laws of physics. It has no limits, just like us. We are the Atma. When this opens through the pineal gland, and I'll send out the hue in a moment, on higher low tone levels to connect the dots between what exists above the void, many planes up from here, down here to earth and through us. When we go out in space to start the journey, we're plugging into the pure omnipresent power that's out there. There is no negative thoughts or feelings and emotions that can be taken out in space and recorded in that omnipresent field of energy. It doesn't accept it. You can't do it stays within the atmosphere of the planet. That's why we go outside that atmosphere. Beings that work with removing secondary implants, for instance, actually are humans from other planets who don't have subconscious minds. Most of them I work with are considered to be master teachers. They remove the secondary implants, but they do it by having you go through the process of experiencing it yourself. Then we go on these journeys, generally in that order, but not always. The journeys we go on, once secondary implants are gone, go take place way out in creation, all the way up through the higher planes, beyond the void, to other worlds and other systems. Things you actually lived lives in yourselves that you were made to forget. This is important, and if I don't say it to you, no one will. The option I had when I was forced to be incarnated in a body on this earth when that body was three, I had a choice when I woke all this up against all odds to either do be in revenge against those beings from other worlds who did that to me or create something new that will be beneficial to all life. Where would I rather spend my time? And I made a choice. What is under in creation now was brought into co-creation with Satnam and other beings that exist in what's called pure positive energy above the void, where no negative nature exists. Then, and only there, can new things be brought here to change things. This is something people need to remember. Now we'll send out these tones in order to create a link between the source behind all life, all through the dimensions, down through Ambassador Torellian, who you'll meet, and other beings from other worlds who work with us in this way. And they get plugged into the same field that comes from the source itself. And we have a field of protection around us, when we're outside in space, that no negative nature, negative technology, or beings on any level, on any dimension can penetrate because it's energy that comes from above the void. It's impenetrable. It is master over the lower worlds of time and space. We're supposed to be the same way. You
beings who remove secondary implants on secondary implant removal journeys, like Shantyal and Tonaltyal, Dantian and Lamtian and others, are with us on this journey and many of their associates, a male and a female, one, one beside each one of you, right beside where you are on Earth. They are projecting a pure energy human form that looks human, about 36, perfect, flawless, beautiful, and handsome. The atmas they are, spherical, are hovering near the ceiling. Your body is in the trance state called sleep because you put it there every night in the same way, except the difference is this is working with beings from other worlds and master teachers that help you remain conscious through the experience of putting your body to sleep. There is a difference. This is something you should be able to do. But for people on Earth, it needs to be rehabilitated. It needs to be dormant higher faculties that allow you to do this stuff and know it have been turned off for ages in most people. They need to be turned back on. So what you already have, not in the future, is what needs to be turned back on. The hue expansion ray, which is a proper term for the hue with something new running through it in the lower worlds of time and space, only works one way now. And its purpose is to retire evil as an experiment that has failed in the lower worlds of time and space and replace it with something that makes people wiser, that provides a flow of energy through them so they have the intelligence to know how to make decisions on multiple levels and multiple dimensions so that they'll never be, never be vulnerable to be trapped again. That's what this is about. When you look up, you realize that you are an atmospherical hovering near the ceiling, right between these two. They have long hair to their shoulders. They have different Sometimes they have blue skin, sometimes green, sometimes Caucasian, sometimes Asian. Even African American are the things that people think of on Earth. But these forms are pure, perfect, flawless. This is the way we show ourselves to each other when we're normal, when we're awake. We are, have an at, we are the Atma. We manifest a pure physical prototype form of what we are. And that is used through it to build or connect you to a body. For people on Earth, they were stuffed into bodies here without their permission. This was not a conscious act. You wouldn't come to this Earth to be dumber than a brick and forget everything from some God that says, go do this because then you'll get it right. How can you get it right if you don't have the wisdom of the ages of your lives involved? You see the problem with that thinking? It's incorrect. That's backward. That's wrong. Faith and belief should, learn, should lead to direct experience where we become the knower. The knower doesn't mean it's about ego. The knower, the Atma, is not ego. Ego comes about in the forms of bodies we're running on the lower planes, like etheric, mental, causal, astral, and physical. That's where the problems exist, in the realms of duality. There's one energy that's not dual that supports all that. It is a co-creator with us, which means if we imagine, for instance, good for ourselves and our family, and we're afraid of the present and future, that's opposing energies, splits the imaginative, the co-creative ability of a being in half and grounds it into the earth. It keeps people stuck because they're not utilizing their gift of seeing into the multiverse and plugging into an omnipresent living power to know things. They're, because that, that, that one energy will not work with positive and negative elements unless they're harmonized first. This is a, a fail-safe. It's the way the omnipresent power that we are comprised of is how it works. It can only co-create with us or manifest what we imagine, good and bad and both, to whatever degree. So obviously, as a teacher itself, we're supposed to learn how to 
Jews, uninterfered with by negative influences. What we choose to imagine that will be beneficial for us, yes, but also for all life, not just life on earth, all life in the entire multidimensional creation, because that is our true nature. That's how we're supposed to be. People on earth were meant to be custodians and caretakers of the planet. They do not own. Nobody possesses the earth. People own property, they pay property tax. They, no matter even if it's paid off, they don't really own anything. The point is, it's acts of responsibility. We are supposed to be caretakers and custodians of the planet, of the plants, of the land, of the oceans. Animals have atmas running them just like you. People on Earth are not respecting life here. They are not fulfilling their job. They're not doing it at all. In the end, that means the end of life on a planet, always. To avoid that, we need to be opened up and start working with people from other worlds who are far more advanced than we are, who don't work with ego trips and egos. They don't have subconscious minds. There's a huge difference between them and us. So we must make this headway in new direction. There you are, projecting a perfect form about 36. All of you are women, so you're projecting this perfect trim form at 36, made of energy. Beautiful, flawless. And I'm projecting a man about 36, handsome, flawless. This is something we had and were able to do from the beginning, hundreds of billions of years ago when we started moving down to the lower worlds to run bodies. This is how we would communicate with each other. Otherwise, we're just a bunch of floating spheres. Of course, atma to atma, we know and recognize the individuality of each person. So this projected energy form is more of a convenience. It's a way we show our true self to each other. It's telepathic. The hue that flows through us is not matter, energy, space, and time. It is not molecules, it's not atoms, it is not DNA. It is that which supports all that, behind all that. This is what and who we really are. Next thing you know, you're up at 10,000 meters in the atmosphere. The same two beings are standing beside you. Why? Because they are keeping your primary implant turned off. And if you've had secondary implants removed, they're gone anyway. If you haven't, then they're keeping secondary and primary implants turned off. So you can go out and real gain real advantage, real experience. Bring back to Earth at the end of the journey a higher intelligence, a higher IQ, a higher ability to understand and comprehend the multidimensional nature of yourself as an Atma and the nature of the multidimensional creation itself. As an Atma, we are all capable of doing this. As a one body and one brain in one lifetime, we are not. That's not, what it, that's not where the mind is. The mind is not in the brain in your head. That comes from a body you're running four dimensions up from here. All emotion comes from the next major division called the astral plane to people on Earth, where all emotion moves matter around not like it is on Earth. And so you're running bodies on these planes you've long forgotten are there, and they've forgotten you. These would be called your higher selves. That doesn't mean they're awake enough to really help you here. Look at the condition of the planet. Does it look like higher selves are helping you here? This kind of stuff is what needs to wake up in people. They once knew it. It's their right. They have a right to know this again. Well, of course they do. When you look down from 10,000 meters, you see right through the roof of where you live. And you can see you're hovering near the ceiling with two beings beside you looking at your body. You're in both places simultaneously because the quality and characteristics of the ability of each atma is multidimensional in nature. You can be running over or hovering over different bodies on different planes as a single Atma, which you're doing anyway. Even if you don't remember this, you're doing it anyway. 
Now you're out in outer space. This means you're out in this field like where a space shuttle would go even further. You're in this black void, only to you now, you look around you and you realize it's a white golden light everywhere. And little planets, moons and suns and stars and galaxies float in it. There's an electromagnetic field around the Earth. As an app, you can see it. Looks kind of like the electromagnetic field around the Earth you'd see if you Googled it and see what scientists see that it looks like. You have one like that, a massive field, way outside the Atma. The same field surrounds your physical body on Earth. It isn't a little colorful aura like people on Earth think near the body. It's much differently shaped and much more dynamically shaped than people on Earth yet know. Implants are out in that field. Not in the Atma itself. But it's through those influences that we look at the rest of the universe. And in fear, subconsciously influenced fear, we choose to run in every direction. But where it would be most beneficial for us to remember who we are. That is what the misuse of science was done on people. This began over half a million years ago at the end of a great war. There are no wars in our galaxy right now amongst races. No matter what anybody tells you on Earth, there are no wars out there. And what is out there is not a federation. That came from Gene Roddenberry and Star Trek and all those great movies and all that. There's no such thing as radioactive warp core driven spaceships in the future. There never will be that kind of future. Those kinds of vehicles that pollute out tailpipes are not only illegal, that kind of energy cannot get people faster than the speed of light as it's known on Earth. You have to use an entirely different kind of propulsion technology to do that, which works with the omnipresent power itself. If the respect of that is not there in beings, they are trapped on a planet. They'll never be space-faring race. Because space is already occupied. And they're not going to tolerate knuckleheads like people aren't going out there and trying to throw their nuclear bombs around, go raid someone's planet, steal the ore. That's never, ever going to take place. Not ever. People running countries today making decisions based on fear they should be free of are thinking that they're going out there to try to fight over the spoils of outer space. It's like they're in a freight train, a super train going 1,000 miles an hour, sitting around drinking tea. And at the end of the track a mile away is a brick wall, and they're headed right for it. There isn't going to be any spaceships with tin cans with fuel and oxygen aboard them, going out in space that can ever go very far out there. Not now, not later. And their gravitic technology utilizes the one power, zero-pointer toroidal energy in the universe. Most advanced classified scientists know exactly what that is now on Earth. They just don't know how to apply it. A little bit. You can reverse engineer some things. You can even have your own anti-gravity ship. But without cooperation from beings from other worlds, they will never be allowed to take those out amongst the stars. This is a fact. Higher science, higher awareness, understanding of science. Most, many of you were scientists in many lives. This is not a problem for you to understand this stuff, even if it was never taught to you on Earth because you already carry the awareness and experience of it in you. Waking that up, that's another matter, right? Out in space, you see Ambassador Trillian. What he is, is a member of what's called the Say Rays race. Say Rays. It means they are human. But he's 18 feet tall. He's showing you a body form here that we are standing in a circle around them, all of us that he had over a billion Earth years ago. The Say Rays did not evolve in our galaxy. Humans are more ancient than you can possibly imagine. They're one of the oldest races, uh, species out there. I'm talking about the DNA body forms that you run. On other worlds, humans have four-stranded DNA and aren't limited to two. 
the telomere on the end of the DNA on human bodies on Earth that was play manipulated. That telomere shrinks every time cells divide. That's aging. On other worlds, the telomere does not shrink. You get the picture? It's a, it's a, it's a, a switch. If it's switched off, you age. If it's switched on in a certain way, you do not. All genomes on DNA are mastered by the use of precise sound frequencies. The omnipresent you has an omnipresent sound in the physical universe. Out here you can hear it. It sounds like gentle rumbling thunder everywhere, but no lightning. It's uplifting, but it's everywhere. It's the sound that this omnipresent field of light makes. When you go up into the next dimension, well, the astral area, the sound is more like the sound water makes as it's crashing the ocean on the beach. Another dimension creates like rippling water down a brook. Another one like humming of millions of bees or, or crystal bells or chimes ringing in the distance. So there are different tonal frequencies for entire dimensions. Planets and their location are accessed by the Atma or technology aboard ships by knowing the precise frequency of the planet. They just select their intergravitic drive to be drawn to that planet and repelled away from where they are. It's very simple. Such vehicles do not use energy and do not pollute. They move such energy as the omnipresent hue, uh, toroidal field, zero point energy through their craft and out the other end and they move clear across the universe. That's the only practical way to go about it. This technology is ancient. It's not new at all. Understanding and mastery of the genomes on DNA is ancient. It's not new at all. So you see, in order for us to be in the benefits of such things and the forms of bodies we're running on Earth, we need that brought to us. This is very important. Real disclosure isn't telling people there are extraterrestrials. Anybody can do that and still keep everything classified. Real disclosure is telling everybody the truth about 80 plus races that are constantly coming to this planet, certain government people know, have been lying and deceiving people for 70 years about it out of fear, their own subconscious fear. It's unnecessary, it's destructive, it's idiotic. Fear lowers the IQ and intelligence of all beings. Can't do anything else but that. Dropping it raises it. So Torellian standing there showing you a body they immortalized in a very special way over a billion Earth years ago. They were great scientists once. They helped develop human, humanoid, reptilian, uh, greys, Nordics, tall whites, mantis, all kinds of uh, bashats, which are big lion-like people with two arms and two legs. All these different things they helped bring into creation and brought them up to spacefaring capability, meaning the Atmos could run them this way. They were not, the reptilians weren't even vegetarians back then. It was not like you think. And then it changed. The Ceres disappeared a long time ago to see what we would do with it. I think we all know what that is. Not a pretty picture, at least not for people on Earth. There are whole planetary systems out in our galaxy that would be like paradise to you should you go to them. And it's only been fairly recently in the last few years that Galactic Alliance personnel, as advanced as they are, have been journeying back home across the void, all the way to the source, many planes above that, in order to complete being a co-creator with that source. Things are changing out in space. The Sabre's agenda is about how that's changing. The Parallel Time Trilogy of books are about uh, the Galactic Alliance and its 
participation in ancient Earth history in our solar system. They are linked together. These works are coupled together. One series of books is to help people because it's a channel for the youth to do this, to help them remember all they've been made to forget in bodies they ran in billions of worlds over billions of years. The series agenda is more about what's taking place now and where that's headed. And we are required to co-creatively participate in that change. That's what's so amazing. There are master teachers here. I take the time to reveal them to you because they can be, you can connect with them later and they can help you go further. Master Ramu is standing in the orbit of beings around Tyrellian. You can see the polar ice caps of Earth, the oceans and land masses, the barren moon, meteor crater covered. It does not turn on its axis as it orbits the planet. That is just wrong in every way. The planet's gravity and that of other worlds should have it turning to some degree. It doesn't move at all. This is incorrect. This has to be fixed, but not by people on Earth. They don't know how to do that. Mr. Ramu has a maroon colored robe, simple sandals, like a rope for a belt, um, coarse, curly, sh short cropped black beard and hair, coal black eyes. He's got a crystal staff. It's made of quartz. At least that's how I interpret it. And it's glowing with a golden light, has what in ancient history of Egypt was called the Ankh, symbol for eternal life, a cross with a vertical oval hole above it. It's a teaching tool that he uses with students. Master Opelum is Oceanan. He's further out in space in a circle, and we're all be, or in a circle between these guys. He has pale blue skin, emerald green eyes, jet black hair to his shoulders, slightly grayed temples a little bit. He looks to be about 40, perfectly healthy, trim. And he's showing you his hand open with little webs between them. Lifts his neck. There's three little slits on each side. You wouldn't even notice them if he didn't lift his neck. It's not like a fish. These are humans. The body form he's showing you here made of pure energy has the Atma hovering above it, just like Torellian, just like Master Ramu, and just like each one of us. And what he's saying to you is that in their human world, they... That species of humans evolved with the ability to breathe underwater or on land. It's mostly water covered world, four times bigger than Earth, few islands around the equator, some domed cities on them. They have transport tubes that lead down to domed cities at the bottom of their oceans. This is ocean and technology. Much of it exists on many planets throughout the Galactic Alliance. The Galactic Interdimensional Alliance of Free Worlds is not a federation. It is something headquartered near the center, not in, but near the galactic core on a planet called Zetronami 1. It, has a, it, it is a planet with three moons the size of Earth that circle it with no polar ice caps, and it circles a trinary sun system. 450 million plus advanced spacefaring races are part of that organization which covers just under one half of our galaxy. These are the beings that we have the opportunity to invite here at some point. They're already coming here. What we call of disclosure has begun in the United States this last year in certain ways, where they have a panel of NASA people and NSA, classified organization meeting and interviewing whistleblowers or people that have direct experience with crashed extraterrestrial craft retrievals and bodies and all that kind of thing. They're beginning to admit that they have such things. That's the beginning of disclosure. 70 years of not telling the truth. And the only reason they're doing it now is because they have been contacted and basically said to them, 
you will disclose fully to the people of this planet. Or by the time it reaches a certain point, we will do it for you, with your, whether you're involved or not. That's big because it means people on Earth that are in governments will be embarrassed. Who knows what would happen if the truth came out without their participation. So their participation is best to keep people from rioting in the streets, keep things balanced through this process. Think about it just for a moment. Out here in space, in the hue, truth cannot elude you. You cannot be influenced by something negative, so you can't get it. Out here, you're basically returned to who and what you really are. The responsibility you have from this point is to do some work to co-create with help from such friends how to undo what was done to you. Not just on Earth for that body, all of you. So the journeys we go on go very far out there. It's taken this preparation for this group about 45, well, let's see, no, about a half an hour is all. 6, 6.30, yeah, to get all this done. We're out in space with friends, master teachers, man and a woman standing beside you, even out here. Shantyal and Tomantal are standing beside me. Dantiam and Lamtiam are standing beside Perry. There are other beings who are master teachers here. Etta and Din are Drens. They are from the planet Oceania where Master Opelum comes from. They're hovering above Ramu, above the Atma, not Ramu, above Ambassador Trellium, above the Atma he is. They have Atmas above them. They're showing you a body form about three feet long from the root of their tail, the tip of their cute noses, big bulbous blue eyes, pale green skin, dexterous hands and feet like a human, but they are not human. They are silica-based in evolution in DNA, not carbon-based like humans. And so they set up a, t a charge in their tail that glows like crystal opal in sunlight. And they devolved as an organic species to defy gravity and fly through the air on their planet. They are also master teachers, but they are not human. Courageous to a fault, cute as the Dickens. I adore them. I've known them for over 100,000 years. They, have, they manifest the most refined qualities of advanced humans more than any human I've ever crossed paths with. And they aren't even human. We begin to respect all life as we journey out further into it. It becomes natural. The male and female from the Galactic Alliance that are standing beside you out here in space, you look up, you realize they, have a, they are an atma hovering above this form they're showing you. And then you realize you're an Atma hovering up there with him. You look down, you've got this perfect female, 36-year-old form, trim and perfect, showing yourself to them as you really are. They're doing the same for you. If you look further up in space beyond Eta and Din, you'll see a being standing in space, not on any solid ground. He's showing you a radiant, physical-looking form, and this is Sat Nam. Satnam means true name, first sound, first form you might see in any kind of human character. Two gold bracelets on his upper arms, a little white tunic dress from his waist down to his bare feet, bronze skin, bald head, golden eyes. You'd think he was from India, but he's not. And up above him is a vortex that's whirling like an hourglass. It's golden white energy whirling clockwise. And inside it and outside of it is a blue-green light like water moving around in a circle. And you can see up at the other end of this tunnel of light, you hear a sound like the high note of a flute, beautiful, calling you, drawing us upward. And as Satnam retreats in the distance up through this vortex, Torellian and all of us around him, he's got his two thumbs up. There's a golden white light around them. 
it's a little brighter than the golden white light of space that's the you because it's been brought here through Satnam, through him, to put a field around us to take us up there. So we're moving up as a group of people in a circle, all of us together, up into the middle of this vortex quite quickly. The speed of light has nothing to do with our movements as Atlas in the omnipresent you. There are no limits like that in the hue itself, nor are there any in us. In the middle of this vortex, as we move up through it, you can see right through it. It's transparent. You see all these levels of galaxies, one on top of the other, moving past us. And way up ahead, you see a pale blue infinite void of light. Nothing in it, no solid substance. You don't see any beings. It is pure hue. It is a barrier. Only that between the upper realities and the lower worlds of time and space. So when I did the hues earlier with these friends from out of town, we set up this corridor. It connects to a beach at the beginning of the Atma plane on the far upper side of the void known to certain esoteric groups on Earth. We aren't staying in the void. That's not the realm of the Supreme Being. That realm is far, far higher than the void that people know of on Earth. When we cross this blue expanse at high speed, a group of beings like stars around a galaxy, and Satnam in the distance speeding away, we're moving clear across this void which is bigger than all the galaxies in creation combined, and yet we're moving across it almost instantly. Until we see in the distance a little white star, and as we approach it, it expands into a white, luminous, radiant beach, curves as far into the distance on each side as you can see left and right, until you realize this is circling some huge floating landmass, circular. As we approach this shore, you begin to see Satnam standing in his bare feet on this luminous sand glowing a foot above the sand. The trees behind him, like jungle trees, are transparent. The water moving in them isn't water, and it's radiant. The leaves glow. They're like precious things like fruit trees and palm trees and all these different things, but they're, they're not like trees on earth. Everything above the void produces its own light and sound. There are no suns or moons or stars up there. They are completely unnecessary. Everything that is maintained there, like a landmass, is kept there and maintained by incredibly wondrous beings. They never falter. They never stop supporting it. They always maintain it in place. I have a responsibility above Satnam's realm in a place called the Hue Expansion Ray Academy. Because once it was brought into existence, those that brought it into existence have to take on the responsibility in eternity of maintaining it for the good of all life. This responsibility cannot be shirked. It cannot be thrown on someone else's shoulders. And since there's no negativity or fear of any kind up here, it's not a burden. You don't get tired. You don't get fatigued. You don't have to feed a body or take it to the bathroom. This is pure energy. And so what we're made of as the Atma. Spherical. It has structure and layers. A white core, a white outer, a yellow layer around it of teardrops. These are higher faculties of being. They connect to different planes and different forms we're running. One Atma. Each one of you runs not only the body you have on earth, but at least four others, astral, causal, level, and etheric. And then there's you running all of them. That's our true nature. This isn't something you need to learn first and acquire first in the distant future as you evolve. No, it's something you were made to forget. You knew it long ago, and now as you recover it, you're acquiring the higher faculties of wisdom necessary to keep it and never lose it again. This is important. It's a one-way ticket. Onward and upward while you're alive. 
And then you realize Satnam's reaching down, picking up some of the sand. You find yourselves all standing in your bare feet on this beach beside him, all the way down this curved beach. Turlian's standing just offshore, and it looks like he's standing up to his knees in water. But it's this cobalt blue light. It's this pale blue light. It's not water, but it has the form of an ocean, especially near the shore of this white sand, where it moves ever gently across it, moves around this floating landmass. And he's picking it up, and you realize these white, these round, polished, diamond-like crystals that are luminous move through his energy hand, up through his head, and into the white core of his being, which is quite large, bigger than us. More layers to it. Big golden outer layer. And so he invites you to reach down with this energy hand that looks just like you. The Atma, you are hovering above it. And you reach down and pick up this sand. And it's vibrating in your hand. You can see it's made of little round polished diamond-like things. It goes in your hand up the top of your head, you look up smiling. It goes into the white core of your being, moves out through the layers, turning some of those teardrops on, back on, out through the golden exterior, and then on out into the void, and then down into the lower worlds, moving through us, never stopping. We do not possess the omnipresent power. You cannot hold it in your hand. It is one power. We are part of it like a pure individual drop in a mighty ocean of the same thing. That is what we are. That is what we have always been. It's not something you will become in the future. It's something you are now that needs to be awakened. It's important to understand this, or you'll always be pushing it to the future, a future you can never reach. If you want to visit the source behind all life, you're supposed to be able to do it while you've still got bodies alive, not after you die. There's no guarantee you'll do any of this if your body suddenly stops, unless you're aware of it before that body stops. One thing in this way that you will not take with you when you pass away is fear. That creates a whole different end of the future for your present and your future. And with many others in the universe in creation, that are doing this right now. You'll never be alone in co-creating in this way. When you look up in the jungle trees, there are birds that Satnam has meet us here. And they are about a foot long. They look like a blue jay with long V-shaped split tails like a swallow, big blue eyes, and they have rainbow colored skin. I mean, rainbow colored feathers, thousands of colors, very beautiful. And there's an atma hovering above each one of them. They are male and female. They're in two rows of 12 in front of us. They have perfect vocal cords. They start singing. They start putting out the hue on multiple levels with perfect singing voices that are welcoming us into the land of the atma other side, up above and beyond the void. The first realm where the energy is pure positive. There's no negative nature here. And you're not allowed to bring anything with you. That negative nature and implants stay turned off with your sleeping body all the way back on Earth. So you can go here. Be here. And have experience of this. My describing what you're seeing is to help you remember how to do it for yourself at some point when you have the courage to do it. Courage is there. When implants are gone, courage surfaces. In fact, all of you have had the courage to go on this journey with primary implants, which means you've always had the potential to be master over such things no matter what was done to you. And you've shown that by being here crossing paths with me in the hue. You've done that. Remember this. You have the capability to end subconscious fear and subconscious influences permanently. It dwells in you already. It moves through you even now. These are the realms of direct experience. When we change up here, life in the lower worlds, even on Earth, changes. 
perhaps for the first time in really conscious, constructive, uplifting ways in several hundred billion years. These are not realms of time and space. There's no time and space in these realms. There are no suns and moons and stars in the atmosphere you look around here that's surrounding this floating landmass, this pale blue luminosity people call the void. And Sat Nam levitates upward. It's the Atma pulling his physical appearing form upward. And we move over the top of the trees with these birds. They're not birds. The genetics of these birds are as intelligent, even more intelligent than you. It's the Atma that's running them. They can speak to you with vocal cords. They can speak to you telepathically. We begin to have a different respect for all life after such journeys. It's not like it's the first time you knew it. <laughs> As we go over the top of this jungle in a circle around Terrellian, Satnam's leading the distance. In the distance, you can see a long snow-covered mountain range at a diagonal angle trailing off into the distance towards the upper left. There are big pillars like Roman Greek pillars of a blue transparent stone. Big ones in front of a number of stairs, a luminous steps that go up inside a kind of a sanctuary. And there's a shaft of white golden light coming down into that onto a throne chair. But nobody sits in that chair. There's no tyrant here. And you look down and Satnam is pointing downward and you see there is a, we're quite a ways from this palatial estate. There's a brown moss covered path winding up to it. And now you see maybe a hundred feet diameter, a white marble like stone floor. There's a fountain in the center of it. And it has white scalloped edges around it like moonstone or ivory. And there's a statue of Satnam standing in on a square pillar. And it's his two gold bracelets on his arms. His hands are down at his sides. There is a white golden light coming down through the top of this device, through his palms, filling this bowl full of this luminous white gold and looks like liquid, dropping down the edge in a smooth glistening sheet and disappearing into the ground. Surrounding it is a white marble flat seat maybe about three feet high, two and a half feet. It has 12 intricately stone-carved curled legs supporting it. And Satnam is hovering in the air beside it, pointing to it. This isn't about ego. This is a device that channels energy from the higher realities down into the void, down into the lower planes, through galaxies from the galactic center, out into worlds and solar systems and back again. There is a crystalline staircase. It looks like transparent crystal. It curves around to the left outside this marble sitting seat and goes up to a transparent rectangular platform that's right inside this golden shaft of light. Terelian and Satnam are going to move up inside that. It's like they're walking up this staircase. They're really floating above it. The atom is above them and they move right inside this shaft of light. So we join them. And once we're inside it, we realize that we are this circle of beings around Terelian, and there's a huge space in here. And we're moved upward. Where we're going is into the atmosphere, in the upper atmosphere of the Atma plane, or Satnam's realm. And we're going up into the U Expansion Ray Academy. It was constructed, or manifested, between the sixth realm and the fifth where Satnam dwelt in a specially created parallel dimension. And what goes on in that academy has to do with creating a new prototype of being. Consider this. There are beings there called silent mentors. They are the mechanics of creation. They have unlimited freedom, unlimited power. They have no restrictions on them whatsoever. They can move between one point in creation to the highest realm, what we call the ocean of sound and light, and those beyond it, all the way down to a planet 
they could appear as a teaspoon on your table and you'd never know it to carry out a mission. They can be anywhere instantly in the entire creation. These beings and master teachers, what people would consider to be master teachers, sit between beings like us or sit on opposite ends and move the impression of their energy of how they work and live and think through us. And this way we begin to pick up on how we can become more like them. There's already as many silent mentors as needs to run the mechanics of the entire creation. Run a galaxy, run a planet, keep it spinning. Run the interdimensional doorways between planes and guard them. That's their job. They never sleep, they never rest. They don't get bored, they don't get fatigued. In this realm where we're going, you begin to see up ahead what looks like six mountain peaks snow covered in a circle in the center of a huge floating landmass, floating in an incredibly brilliant blue void. And behind that blue energy is a white golden light. It comes from the upper realities. It is a huge floating circular landmass with a luminous white sandy beach glowing around it, the outer circumference, six mountain peaks in the center, to the western mountain on a lower plateau, what's called the U Expansion Ray Academy Tower. It is a glass-like blue tower that goes up to a oval uh, administration area about two-thirds way up the tower and up to a minaret point. In it is another fountain. The shaft of white golden light comes down from the point of this into this fountain, fills it, and it drops below it after first being conditioned with the U expansion ray consciousness, what it's for. There is no statue of Satnam here. That belongs below here. There it comes out of a white marble-like floor like the fountain below, and surrounding it in seven concentric circles are botanical plants four feet high with exotic flowers in circles that go out in the distance. At the bottom of this white marble floor, these, these gardens that extend out to the edge of this floating landmass, there are white roadways that extend as straight as an arrow to the beach like the spokes of a bicycle tire, all the way around the entire circumference of this floating landmass. Down the western roadway, first turn to the right in a clearing, is a huge four-sided, golden-sided, quartz, crystalline-capped, topped pyramid. It is a teaching facility. To the left is another facility down just this one roadway that has a tall ivory domed building like a silo, like a grain silo. Obviously that's not what it's for. And then down the roadway to the west to the ocean all the way where that beach is glowing where there's this huge cobalt blue light out there that looks like water and atmosphere, but it isn't. There are turns to the left and the right and more teaching facilities. Every road that extends from the bottom of the base of this U Expansion Ray Academy Tower goes down roads where left and right turns into more teaching facilities. Many hundreds of them. When we move up above the six snow covered mountain peaks with Torelli, you're looking down on a valley, a circular valley, in the base between the six mountains. There's a white marble-like circular island. It could be sand, but it depends on how you... It would feel like sand if you were there, but it looks like a solid stone floor when you look at it from above. There's a blue-green luminous lake around it, and in the middle of it is a four-foot-high pedestal made of a stone that looks like lapis lazuli on earth, blue stone laced with gold. Hovering above it is a four-foot-in-diameter 
blue glass-like sphere with a radiant cobalt blue star in the middle of it. Coming down through the top is a white shaft of golden light. Down below this section, in the middle of this floating landmass, is a hollowed out interior. And there are 12 white chairs that circle this shaft of light inside. Beings called silent mentors have a teaching facility inside the hollowed out interior of the Hue Expansion Ray Academy. And we move up above the entire academy and look down on it. It's like dividing a pizza with a cross in half. You got four quarters, and then down the end of a third a roadway, two thirds of the way down the central roadway, in each quarter to the right, is a circular clearing, and there are more teaching facilities with silent mentors here. We're going to go to the one in the northwestern quadrant, and we're going to come down and hover around what appears to be. Another one of these crystal spheres with a blue star in it, but there's no pedestal. It just hovers above this white marble-like circular arena. Around the outside of it are 12 trees. 12 trees that look like giant weeping willow trees. Everything here provides its own light. There are no suns or moons or stars up here, and none of it, they are not needed. You are producing your own light here. These trees have broad spoon-shaped leaves, but they look like dripping, drooping, weeping willow trees, and they're all glowing. The sap in the trees is glowing. Standing above them are 12 men and women, alternating male and female. They have single form fitting different gowns on with bare feet and long hair to their shoulders. This is the perfect form they show us. But when you look in their face, there are no facial features. It's a white glowing light. And when you look into it, you can see galaxies upon galaxies, upon planes, upon dimensions. This is how they think. Above them is the real silent mentor. It is a sphere like us, four times bigger in diameter than us with twice as many teardrops. And then we're in a circle around here. Torellian's standing in the middle above this sphere. There's a white shaft of golden light coming down into the star in this sphere. We are in a circle between the silent mentors and some master teachers, including Torellian, Ramu, Opelum, Eten Din. There's even, there's even my cat here that translated some years ago who has his tail glowing. Eten Din have been training him. This is an Atma hovering above a cat body. He's free. He's a friend. So there between us, they're behind us, near the center, we're in between these, and there is an exchange of a glowing white light between us, moving through us, back and forth, so that we begin to get, in a sense, it kind of begins to rub off on us, what our potential really is, now as Atmos, that never existed before. When we bring this kind of thing back to Earth, it moves through us. It goes through the planet. It goes out in space. It goes back to the core of the galaxy and up the white golden shaft that is not a black hole, as people have said. It goes back to the source, many planes above the Hue Expansion Ray Academy. And then it returns right through. It's like the sign of affinity. It's always moving, never stops. We are supposed to be conscious co-creators surrendered into it in the sense that we already are one with it, we might as well co-create with it properly. That is our destiny. That's why we are in existence. Out the eastern roadway, and we're back up above the six mountain peaks. You see one of these roadways that goes straight to the eastern coast. Now we're going to move over there with Torellian and hover down the road and turn into the right turn in the last teaching facility near the ocean beach that surrounds this luminous radiant sand. And as we walk along there, there are booths on each side with beings 
showing you creative wares they've made in co-creative harmony with the source behind all life that will be put into operation at some point. Artistic things, pictures with three dimensions, with beings in it that talk to you. It's things that you've never seen before. And at the end of this long road of all these booths of people sharing with us, you see a huge outdoor stadium. It's beautiful green lavender grass, and it's, it's as big as a soccer stadium. And up above it is floating an energy sphere made of a golden light. There's a blue star. And Torellian is moving all of us up around this. Of course, I go right inside it, and I invite you in. And inside, there's unlimited space. This is a co-creation dome. This is where we come as individuals to collaborate, to create new ways of doing things that have never been brought into creation, that can change things. This is where it's done. This is why this place exists. It was built and put there, or suspended there, a little over nine Earth years ago. It's not old. When you're up inside it and you have this perfect form, that you are an Atma running this perfect female form, your hands will move, light will come from them, and forms will take shape in front of you. It could be a, uh, it could be talking to a cat or a dog on Earth because they have vocal cords. For example, with an Atma hovering above them, and your friends, you wouldn't think of harming them to save your life. And they're moving their little paws, which have dexterous little fingers on them, like a human here. And they're moving things into creativity with us. Things that have never been seen before. And then the, the source of the energy coming through the star, the one power, adds its own guidance. It is the power that manifests all things we imagine. But we do not. As individuals, we are a drop in a mighty ocean of this one power. When we work in harmony with this one power, we have access to the entire power, which means it can manifest through what we create collectively. Far better creations than we could do just on our own. This is a collective place where beings come to co-create with each other. There is no competition. There is no fear. Everybody works together absolutely thrilled to be doing this with others, without that, without ego, because this is our true nature. Then you find yourself standing with your toes wiggling in the glowing white sand at the end of the western roadway. And it's moving up your feet, flowing like a river up to the top of your head. It has a sound like a hauntingly beautiful note of a flute playing through your being. It goes up into the white core of you, the Atma, turns on layers of teardrops in different layers. It goes out to Torellian, who's standing there out in this ocean, up to his knees with his light around his two thumbs. He's showing you that he's bringing the energy from this place. It goes down where Satnam is. Satnam's already here beside him doing the same thing. It goes down through them, through Satnam by his fountain, goes out in the void, goes down through the etheric, goes down through the mental, where all your thoughts and mind come from, not from your brain on earth, and down through the causal, where all understandings of cause and effect are brought into focus so you create with your imagination in ways that don't create a negative counter effect. Down in the astral, where all emotion moves matter, and it corrects this imbalance of opposing emotional forces and unifies them so that they can be putting out creations that are benefiting you and all life. It will not stop with us back on Earth. We go out there and join Torellian and Satnam, Etta and Din, even my cat and the mate that that cat has now, feminine. We go down into this ocean, sinking right into it. We can breathe the water. It passes right through us. There are dolphins and whales and other creatures here with atmos above them. They can speak to us and greet us. We're moving downward at tremendous speed until suddenly you realize you are standing beside Torellian in an orbit of beings near planet Earth. 
There's one more stop we need to make. It's important. When you look at Earth with its polar ice caps, it's like a heat wave goes over it. And you see now an Earth that is where Earth should be, right? It's, it's sitting there, but it has no polar ice caps. The moon has oxygen and, and clouds and rain and little lakes and little rivers and dome cities, and it's turning on its axis as it orbits the planet Earth. This is in the third higher parallel dimension of the physical universe, on our way back to where you're used to. It is a one of a number of Earths that exist in different parallel dimensions within what we call the physical universe. It's just big. This isn't astral, this is still in the physical universe. Galactic Alliance technology and personnel know how to move their ships between all 144 of them. They do not move them into the astral plane. There's a barrier there that separates higher molecular time rate matter for astral bodies from physical. This energy coming from this world, you see a continent from the left equator, left hemisphere to the right hemisphere, covers half the planet. It goes up towards the North Pole about a third of the way from it and continues to the eastern coast and then down towards the south about a third of the way from the South Pole and makes this big continent floating over the equator. You can see through the planet on the other side is a continent two-thirds its size centered over the equator. That front continent is called Lemuria or Mu. The back one Atlantis or Atla. It is the prototype that never got destroyed when the poles on Earth you're familiar with changed every 100,000 years. The Lemuria that was there was destroyed and sank beneath the ocean waves. And in a day, new continents rose up. It was not a long ice age type thing. No one survives that unless you're taken off world for a time. Maybe a few animals in the sea survive. Maybe a hundred people. Point is, it's not a us. Uh, there's nothing left in such a planet at that time for people to survive. They become savage. They have no technology. So the planet has to be reseeded, recolonized. This kind of process for Earth has ended. You're going to see a emerald green glowing beach. It's curved upward like a half moon upward. And it's down near the southern point in the middle of the equator above the South Pole. Inland from space, you can see a single snow-covered mountain and a waterfall cascading down its side. It disappears behind a blue-green forest around a huge, clear dome covering a small city. Small meaning it's not like New York. And then you look down and you realize your feet, this perfect energy form of you, is wiggling in emerald green sand. It's glowing a foot above the sand. Satnam has come all the way down here with us to pick up some sand. Torellian's standing offshore in a kind of a blue-green luminous ocean. The beach has a glowing sand. You pick it up and it's like little polished emeralds glowing. They go right into this energy hand you are, up through the top of your head, into the white curve you're being, and out to the green layer, turning on some of those teardrops. And it continues through you, up above this body that's filling this experience with a body of energy that can taste, tight, sight, taste, touch, smell, all that stuff it can do, and transmit this to the Atma. It is not a physical DNA body. It is the same energy as the core of your being, kind of a projection. And so this green energy comes from a planetary system on the other side of the Milky Way, from a planetary race known as the Zeantranamus. They are standing on this beach right now. They brought the gift of this emerald green light to this facility to work with the Galactic Alliance, the Se race, and master teachers. They work in the dome city you see up in the distance on the left side of the snow-capped mountain. It's jungle trees on the beach. The waterfall comes out of a cave opening, cavern, drops down a sheer cliff face, 
There's an oval opening above it with dome-shaped lights that leads in a tunnel down inside that mountain. It winds down inside this mountain, and as it goes through it, it changes molecular time rate to a slower one, and it empties into an opening in the cavern ceiling of a base that was built by extraterrestrials, Galactic Alliance people, on Earth in 1908. They've been around for a long time. When you look down on the beach, and you realize all of us are standing looking at each other there, this green energy, when you look down the beach, you're gonna see two people standing near the pathway leading up, winding through straight as narrow through a jungle. But they're standing there, they're 10 feet tall, male and female. Female's a little shorter. They have silver hair, like it's made of silver metal, but you know it's soft. They have violet colored eyes kind of moonstone colored white skin, longer fingers and hands and torsos than we have on earth. This was a gift from this couple. The forms they're showing you are humanoid. They have been a couple together for three and a half million years in body forms that are immortalized. The telomeres do not shrink. They run a little more than half the galaxy, the world systems, and they are now in co-creative harmony with the Galactic Alliance. The whole universe, the one we live in, is in harmony. The green energy is so you can help you remember your lives in the lower worlds of time and space you were made to forget through subconscious fear. That's one thing. The white light we brought from the beach that surrounds the Hue Expansion Ray Academy came with us too. It's a golden white light that moves through us. That's to help you remember your existence that predates your existence in the upper realities that predates the creation of the lower worlds of time and space. So if I ask you, how old are you? Your answer cannot be relative to the body you have on Earth. This is really important. This kind of journey, this kind of work cannot be reversed once you go through it. It's permanent and it moves only onward and upward. We'll go into the Dome City another time that's there, but understand that this moon that circles that planet that's alive, and life in Dome Cities, is a prototype. At some point it will be used to make the dead moon that doesn't turn around Earth like this one. There's no negativity in the atmosphere, none in the water. That's why the oceans and water here glow. It's normal. Earth's oceans and H2O, which can store the hue, are depleted. Eight billion people grounding it into the earth and not doing their job is why that is. That will have to be fixed. It can't be fixed by people on earth. They're not nearly awake enough to fix any of that. It has to come from the greater God outside, out in the greater universe. Our requirement as an awakened Atma is to know the life in the grand multidimensional creation. That is required. We have to recover that ability. And you find yourself standing in a circle around Torelli and outside the earth with the polar ice caps you're familiar with. And then you find yourself hovering near the ceiling where you live. And this man and woman that went with you on the journey from the Galactic Alliance, who happen to be master teachers as well, experts in implant situations and removals, when they remove an implant, it's done outside their own physical body. They get outside of it on a ship. We go through that, and we go through a secondary implant removal journey. In this case, they came with us to keep your primary implant off. Now that contains a real torture and death experience, which is why people are so terrified to look at it because it'll say, if you look at this and remember this, we'll eat you alive or some such nonsense. No such beings exist anywhere around you or in our solar system to do this threat. It is a program. The time will come when you will co-creatively sit in a white chair with Galactic Alliance citizen help and see what's in it then it becomes a memory only and can no longer affect you in a negative way. 
consider this underway. There you are with a white golden light coming down each through each one of you, through the sphere you are, through this perfect physical form you show, it's through the two beings standing beside you, and it goes through this huge electromagnetic field that surrounds the atma. Looks like the field around the Earth, identical to it. North Pole, South Pole kind of thing. And it goes down through the physical form, through the pineal gland. And there's the same big electromagnetic field that surrounds it from the top of the head to the bottom of the spine. And it goes out into the universe. It goes into three pyramids that have been placed on Earth. Two of them in the deepest oceans on Earth, in the Pacific and Atlantic oceans. One inside a hollowed out interior of a mountain in the Himalayas. And they have fountains in them. The white golden light moves through these fountains. It happens to have a, a, a statue of Sat Nam in them because he is from source energy. So these are new. They can be detected by people on Earth, but they can't, they can't do anything with them. They can't destroy them. Bullets don't work. Nothing affects them at all. They're not made of material matter, yet they exist in it. This is new. The energy that we brought back goes through us, out into space, out into a big pyramid that's stationed between two stable asteroids, floating in between them, in the asteroid field that was once a planet before it was blown apart. It circles in the orbit of a planet between Mars and Jupiter. There's a fountain in that one. And it goes out to between stars in our galaxy. Then it goes to the core. The white shaft of golden light that runs up and down the core. And there's a sound humming in it. It's just very high. It goes up the white core and returns to source. It never stops moving. We are not meant to grab the hue. We're meant to co-create it with it as it moves through us. So when you're ready, open your eyes. That journey has been recorded, and it'll be sent to you by Perry. What I would ask that you do, of your own free will, is to go on the journey a second time, maybe a day or two, cup of tea, no phones. Play it again. Go on the journey. You'll find out a lot more happened than you're aware of right now, except that when you go on it the second time, you're going to discover that your IQ has gone up. Your ability to comprehend this has gone up. This becomes your own experience in your daily life. Any questions now that we're back? Hi, For those who are watching our videos and you who want to have this wonderful experience to recall who you are and to know the light beyond us in many reality higher than Earth, you can always join us next time will be 17th of February, Thailand time or 16th in the US time. You can always contact us through paralleltime.com or my email address. The address will be under this video link. Yeah, I will put them there. The direct email ad, well, the main website address because many videos are there that explain exactly what this work is about. There's one premiere video at the top of my YouTube channel that starts to play as soon as you go there. It's in one minute, it tells everybody on earth exactly what this work is about. One minute. Just put it up there. So you can go and watch that at no charge, it's free. Um, I will leave the link to my YouTube channel there as well. Any questions? No? Okay. Then I uh, will. Yes? Yeah, any of you? would like to join your experience as well. You don't have to share anything unless you are motivated to. And it's up to you. So why don't you just let that settle with you for a little bit and see what comes of it. How's that? Yes, it looks like Quan has something to say, Quan. Yes. Yes, thank you very much, Scott, for the wonderful experience as always, very priceless. And I, I have one question because right now we will um, we try to await 
um, from from our physical world. So I'm I'm wondering about our our higher self in other planes. So uh, whenever we 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 go on the journey, we went to the um the beaches and we try to um, vibrate our teardrops in in each color or something like that. So um because we share the same atma with other other uh, higher selves in other planes. So right. this at um. Well, it, it will also always help them to be awakened as well, right? Yes, correct. And but that's been done. That's done on our way back. We don't have the time to go into these lower planes where there's negative and positive energy, like the etheric mental causal. They're traps for the atma. The higher selves we're talking about there have lives that are just as sometimes as unconscious as you've been here, but you, being aware like you are now, are waking that up in them. We do this on our way back from every journey. You'll become more aware of this. Become like, how did I ever forget that? Of course I knew that. It'll be better attitude at some point. That's what we want. Okay? Okay. So that's Thank all you happening. You don't have to try to make it work. It's being made to work with you on the journey. Especially easier when this primary implant is kept turned off. You're going to find especially for those of you that have the secondary implants removed, that whenever some fear comes up about the present or future, because of planet Earth and its radio shows are all so negative, when it does, you'll find that you can decide a free will to send the hue into that fear or turn around and watch, look at a butterfly or waterfall and it'll shut off. You will have this ability to shut it off as long as you remember to do it before you get caught up in running a primary implant trauma through your nervous system. It has a certain time and then it shuts off and you're back to normal. Better to shut it off before it gets there, if you see what I mean. Yes? Yeah. You'll find Thank out. you very much. You're very welcome. Any other questions? Then I want to wish you the very best. I will bring this recording to a close.